Nice, nice. How's everyone doing tonight? Nice, awesome. That's a great response. Uh, my name's Taylor. I work here with Tsunami. It's great to see everyone. Um, how many of you guys were here last week? Good amount. Awesome. Cool. Hey, real quick, we, I want to cover something about last week. Um, shh. All right, so we got one rule while we're at Tsunami, and it's we are all in. So that means whatever is going on. And last week, we tried to play a game with you guys, and y'all ruined it. <laughs> All right, now, hold up. We get it. We know you guys are in middle school, and sometimes rules are really hard, right? Like, they're, they're hard to follow. But we want you guys to have fun and enjoy the game. So what we need you guys to understand is when we play a game and we have set rules, we need you guys to follow those in order to make the games work. Is that cool? Pretty simple, okay? Follow the rules. I, I had one person say yes. Is that cool? You guys can do that? Awesome. So because of that, I think there were two contestants on stage last week that didn't get a prize. Are you guys here? Do, did anyone participate in the game on stage and not get a prize last week? Okay. You two, we, we got you your snack packs. That's, that's for you. No problem. That's because your friends are jerks. So, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> hey, uh, real quick, we got some friends that are going to come back up on stage. Um, one of my favorite producers ever is back, Wes Abrams, I think. Um, but they'll be up here. Yeah, uh, he's around here somewhere. I think that he might be a little bit frustrated by last week's game. Is the director going to come? Hello? No, I am not coming out. They were so rude to me last week. What is it going to take for you to come back so we can film the best Christmas movie ever? It doesn't matter what movie it is. I will not come out. They are so rude. What is the these, one thing? These children are not actors. They're not rude. They're just excited because it's Christmas time. There's a lot of excitement. There's a lot of energy. School Christmas is really but does not matter. We are here to film the most wonderful, Christmas. the most wonderful. See, they don't respect me when I do not have an accent. Maybe they would respect me tonight with the accent. The so accent's good. We, thank you. My name is, is West, Wes Abrams. Abrams. And, I, and I am a very famous producer and director from another country. I don't know which one it is. Um, what is your name? Um, my name is Holly Seasons, and I'm really... Holly Shelter, I'm I don't just, matter. It does not matter what your name is. I am you just are an assistant, but I really love Christmas, and I'm here to help make this But your name the is best. at the very bottom of the credits at the end. So, my name comes first, because my name is Wes... But everyone's name matters. Wes Abrams, and that is my name, because I am very famous. And you are just a Holly Berry. So... We need, we, here's the game. See, what we came, we need the actors for my next production. So. Christmas, Christmas, who does loves not, Christmas? Christmas does That's not matter. Now listen, for. sit down, children, sit down. So, you obviously are need to go back to the basics. We need to go back to the basics of understanding. Our love for Understanding, no, movies, okay? And so I have created a game. I've created a game in which we will find out what, <laughs> what, what trivia you know about movies. So, here is the name. Stop laughing, all of you. It is not, this is not helping. I love this. I have to produce a movie. The deadline is coming up. So, here is the name of the game we are playing. The name of the game is... Christmas time. The yeah, greatest movie Christmas. Christmas ever made into difficult trivia to help us find actors' game. That is the game we are playing. So, for each section... I love it. We need each section. The middle, the left, and the right. We need a contestant to come up who knows the trivia of the greatest Christmas movie ever to make a picture of an actor. Who loves Christmas the so, most? So, Pepsi, this kid, Pepsi, you come up. This I kid loves Christmas. Pepsi. Look at the Christmas kid. No, he the Pepsi. Christmas. 
You pick the middle. Okay, the middle. Like, is this one section? Ruka. Oh, you right there with the Christmas sweatshirt on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. The yeah, Pepsi. Yes. We have Come the on. Ruka. And we have, now you stand yes. up here by your section and you listen to what they say or you choose your own. So Pepsi, you choose what they, what they say or if you know the answer to the greatest yes. movie of Christmas trivia we have ever known, then you choose that answer. And then you are, you are Fake Santa and Ruka. We have Ruka, Fake Santa, and what is my accent? I don't even know. And, um, and Pepsi, okay, so. Question number one. Now you help them out. You help them out. Help, help the fake Santa out. Okay. All right. You look at your section, not their section. Your Only section over, over there. Okay. Ready. Question number one. Vas is the name of Buddy's mother. Who is it? Susan or cards. Clara? See, we find a game where you can actually say the answer. You cheated last week. You say the answer this week. Okay. What does she think? What do you think? Ruka, Ruka, what do you think it is? A. You are shaking, Ruka, relax. That is not good acting to be shaking on stage. Fake Santa, what do you think? A. A, and Pepsi? A. And the answer is? Is it A? You know right, the greatest trivia movie Christmas. This is so good. Holly Berry, you want to ask the next one? Holly Berry. I would Berry. love to. Let's ha see. Okay. Okay, we see next question is. How many cotton balls does Buddy eat at the doctor's office? Oh, that is a good question. A good question. That is a very good question. You have to pay really close attention to know the movie. Who knows it? Okay, Who knows fake it? Santa, what do you think? B. You think B? Fake Santa, oh, no, you Ruka. What do you like? B. Okay, and Holly, Holly Shelter, Holly Berry, Holly what? Schnitzel, would you go ask her the question? What do you think it is? I think it's B. So they all say B. This is uh, this is great because it means everyone is gonna win or they're no, gonna lose No, this is this is terrible. We need to find the actor for my movie, my production. What is it? Is it three? You both are y'all a point. I'm just very ne impressed by how no, well you guys. No, this is out. not going to work. What's this the next impressive. question? What is what is Mr. Finch, the angry elf, wants his car to be how many degrees in the movie? Ooh, he is requesting this. He is making a request for the temperature in his car to be an exact temperature. Oh, Ruka, we're not so sure what on temperature this one. do you think? 71 or 72? A or B? B. You think it's 72? Fake Ooh. Santa. What do you think? B. You think it's B? What do you think over what there, Pepsi? What do you think? A? A? So we have A and the B and the A. The, no? He said B. You said what? What you say? B. You say B? You say B and A. A. Okay. This is the answer is? Is it yeah. A? Okay. So we have someone who's up by one. That's all we need to know. Yes. And she is up by one point. Okay. So next question. What is the book can be found in the Walter Hobbs office? Is the Beto and the Stu or the Seeking? Which one? Which one is it here? Which, let's start with Angry what Santa. Do you guys think over Fake here? Santa. Wait, do you know the answer? The answer is A or B? A tomato and Stu Seeking. B. She going with B, the Seeking. Should I go? What do you think? Holly Shelter, this A. is why your name is at the bottom of the list. When I look at you, it's your time to go. Okay, and your answer is? I mean, I think it's A, but I see a white paper. Well, so what is your answer? A. You need to act as though somebody you know the answer to the question. That is ask, acting. What is it? A. That was not confident. A. A, B, A? I don't know. I don't remember. Holly, that's why I have a, you. A, B, A. Okay. The answer is? Is B. Yeah. So we have one, one, one and one up, and you, you are going to lose this whole thing. Okay. <laughs> so I think this is the final question. So we will either have our answer, a winner, two winners, or three they losers. All kind of okay. Win. So next question. At what time would the Santa be arriving at Gimbal's? Is it 9 a.m. or 10 a.m.? Have you watched this movie? This is the greatest movie. Have you watched it? C. C is not an answer. It's either A or B. Have you watched the movie? 
Stop shaking. You are not confident. I don't understand. Okay, what answer do you think? It's not cold up here. There are lights. You cannot be on a movie set. There are lights everywhere. It's this okay. Is, you need to leave it's the cold. stage. Okay, I'm what's cold. is your what's answer? A. A. Fake Santa. B. 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 They, they think it's Danny M. Have you seen the movie? Nope. Okay, this was a terrible choice for you to come up. Okay, and the answer is... We have a tie. Oh, Leave my stage, tie. Ruka. Leave my stage. You don't know the answers to the questions. Okay. I think we just, we, I mean, we have two winners already. No, no, we play we both rock, a paper, winners. a scissors. Okay, we play a rock, paper, scissors. So back right, up. You got this. Here, you back, can to do back, it. back to back, back, back to back, back to back. Right here, come here, come here. Pepsi, walk this way. Back up. I, I'm a director, you need to follow the directions. Back, walk this way, back to back. Okay, ready, okay. On the count, on the count of three, you turn and sign. One. Two, three, sign, turn. You have to turn. What is oh, this? Go again, go again. Turn around. This go is ridiculous. Again. Now we know, now we know. It's okay. okay. One, two, three. And you are the winner, Pepsi. Yay! Pepsi is the king of the colas. Okay, are you an actress? Yeet. <laughs> is that, what language is that? I don't even know. That is, I don't know. That's, that's, the, that's the name of a weird language. What is what I don't know. I don't know. What is I don't know. That's not even a country. I don't understand. Do we have a prize for this winner? I think so. All right. We, we have still we not found an actor. Oh. I'm leaving. I'm going. This is not Hollywood East. For you. I am going Merry to Hollywood Christmas. West. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Go. Hey, good work. Good work. Oh, all right. That was pretty crazy. Pretty good. Um, hey, real quick. Super excited. How many of you guys know what we love to do right before we have our Christmas break at Tsunami? Does anyone know? We have a special event called Christmas Morning that we all wear our pajamas and we hang out here and we watch funny videos and play games and it's super fun. You guys don't want to miss it. That is coming up uh, real, real soon. That's in two Wednesdays. So make sure you guys invite your friends. Uh, we got a lot of special stuff happening that night. Hey, I want to invite you guys. If you guys want to stand and come up to the front, that'd be awesome. Um, we're going to sing, and I want to remind you guys to be all in. And what that means when we're singing is not distracting those around you, to be engaged in the lyrics, engaged in what's going on. Hey, if you would, tell someone next to you what the worst Christmas present you ever got was.
it again. How are we doing tonight? You guys ready to sing? Let's continue. Here we go. I wake all day and hope we rise. We speak your name. We lift our eyes to our hearts and to your beat. Where we walk, there you'll be with fire in our eyes. Our life's a light, you love untamed. It's blazing now, the streets will glow forever bright. Your cool reach breaking through the night. You sing. You will
celebrate that tonight. Come on, would you pray with me? Jesus, we're so thankful that you came for the atonement of the world, that we would be adopted as sons and daughters under the living Christ, and that we have been set free from any bondage that's within us or that could ever come against us because the victory that you held for us to have, we have freely and by grace through faith. We have that because of what you did for us, and we can stand and sing these amazing, amazing words. So would that just liberate us tonight? Would we feel so much joy because of that tonight? And that all distractions would fade, and we would just come to see you more clearly, hear you more clearly, and just to love you more. So Jesus, we thank you for this time. Would you invade our hearts and minds? And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Thank you guys for singing. You sounded great. You can have a seat. Don't forget your waters. Just off a napkin and you're going to have to pour your own drink. Mom, does Santa Claus have to go through customs? What time do you have to go to bed? Early. We're leaving the house at 8 a.m. on the button. I hope you're all drinking milk. I want to get rid of it. Hey, don't you know. Right, the pizza boy needs $122.50 plus tip. For pizza? Ten pizzas times 12 bucks. Frank, you've got some money, don't you? Come on. Traveler's checks. Forget it, Frank. We have cash. Yeah, you probably get the kind of traveler's checks that don't work in France. What kind of that? Did anyone order me a plain cheese? <laughs> oh, yeah, we did. But if you want any, somebody's going to have to barf it all up because it's gone. Fuller, go easy on the Pepsi. <laughs> Get a plate. Jerk. Kevin, get upstairs right now. Why? Kevin, you're such a disease. Shut up. Kevin, upstairs. Say good night, Kevin. Good night, Kevin. Whew. I don't know if that's uh, what maybe uh, your Christmas family gathering looks like. I hope not. Uh, my name's Sass, by the way. I work here at church. Get to hang out with a lot of really fun people. But, uh, I, you know, for a lot of us, maybe that sort of attention that you feel in your family around Christmas. I mean, a lot of us travel for Christmas, right? Anybody travel, go somewhere to go be with kind of extended family? For Christmas, yeah. Anybody's extended family come here and hang out with you for Christmas at some point? Yeah. Christmas equals, for everybody in some way, shape, or form, Christmas equals more time with family. And sometimes that's just sort of your kind of immediate family, but sometimes that's your extended family. And sometimes those are people that you, you know them because they're, you know, grandma and grandpa and aunts and uncles, and you've been around them kind of in some way, shape, or form all of your life, but you don't spend every day with them, so you don't know them that well. You kind of know of them, and you know a little bit about them. I hope that you don't sort of feel that kind of tension, because even, for, even before you know, they called him a, a, a big jerk, there was just tension in the room. I don't know if you could kind of feel that, or you kind of know that from watching that movie. And it's true for a lot of us, that when we spend time with our immediate family, of course, but, but certainly when we spend extended time with this extended family that we don't even know that well, sometimes it can be super fun. But sometimes it can be kind of tough at times, and we all kind of have to figure out how to navigate that really over the next month or so as you are with your family. I, I can remember kind of getting to know my extended family a lot better, and most of the time for me, it was through Christmas. 
Here's what we would do on Christmas morning. We would wake up at our house. We lived in Raleigh. We'd wake up at our house, and we would kind of go through our sort of own family's Christmas experience at our house. And we would kind of do that fast. Because what we had to do was we had to get on the road, and we drove to New Bern, North Carolina, about two hours away. We did this every Christmas day. We'd get up, we'd do our stuff, then we'd drive to New Bern. And we went to New Bern because that's where grandmas and grandpas were. And we would go to, we had both sets of grandparents in New Bern, and we would go to both of their houses kind of at different times during the day and over the next couple of days. My dad's side of the family, uh, there was a lot of them, and honestly, I didn't know them all really that well because really, that was the only time we ever saw them was at Christmas Uh, My dad's, we called my dad's dad, so my grandfather, we called him just Grandpa Sasser, that was easy, but (laughs) my grandmother, we called her Bunka. Anybody got weird names for grandmas and grandpas? Yeah, yeah, okay, mine are about to get weird, right? So we called her Bunka, and nobody knew why we called her Bunka. I'm serious, nobody knew that. But all of us cousins, we just called her Bunka. So we would hang out at Granddaddy Sasser and Bunka's house for a while, and then we'd really spend the bulk of our time at my mom's mom's house. I never knew my grandfather on my mom's side because he died a month after I was born. And they say that we're a lot alike and I'm kind of the spitting image of him, but I never knew him. But I knew my grandmother really, really well. Her name was Eloise. Not a name we use a lot nowadays. I, I dare you, name your first child Eloise. See how that goes, right? It was great back then. There were a lot of people named Eloise, but here's what we called her. We called her, you ready for this? We called her Gangi which sounds like a disease, right? And my sister, who's about 12 years older than me, somehow in the mashing up of the word grandmother when she was young, she called her Gangi. And Gangi always talked about Big Mama. Big Mama was her mom, who I never knew, but there was like this sort of mystery around Big Mama and how awesome she was. Big Mama's sister lived two houses down, uh, and her name was Aunt Mamie. And so I knew Aunt Mamie because we would hang out at Gangi's house, and then we'd go over to Aunt Mamie's house, and we'd kind of be back and forth up and down the street as kids. It was awesome, and there were walnut trees, and there were pecans all over the place. It was super fun. Then there was Aunt Ruth, kind of a normal name, but I don't know a lot of Ruths nowadays, but kind of a normal name, Aunt Ruth. uh, She was the sweetest lady in the world. I mean, just thinking about Aunt Ruth over the last day or two has really made me smile. Then the most fun part of this for me was there was a picture, like a big picture, hanging in Gangi's living room of a lady. Her name was Miss Lupton, and nobody knew who she was. Gangi kind of thought she might know who she was, like she was some distant cousin that was related somehow, but Miss Lupton's picture sat in Gangi's living room forever, this distant sort of relation that somehow we all felt connected to. Like when Gangi passed away, my mom got Miss Lupton's picture. And somehow she put Miss Lupton's picture up in our house for some while we were growing up. Again, nobody knew who this lady was, but there was this weird kind of connection with all of these people that were in my extended family, even though I didn't know them that well. And I think that's probably true for a lot of you as well, right? We we know we have our immediate family, the people that are around us, right, Who, who we love every day, right? We love our immediate family, Right? Yes, we do. Right? So we have our immediate family around us, and then we have our extended family, grandmas and grandpas and aunts and uncles and cousins that sometimes we get to see and sometimes we don't. And we're somehow we feel connected to them, and we want to be even more connected to them. I mean, even you know, my son CJ, who's in ninth grade, has recently started talking about uh, wanting to go on Ancestry.com and figure out kind of the history of the family and want to know kind of all the stuff about who we are and our lineage. Somehow in us, it's kind of important to be connected to all of that. And, and I think for us, as we kind of, you know, go through life, it's unfortunate that we don't really know a whole lot about our extended family, right? I mean, the rub is we, we know our extended family really well, but we're not real connected to our extended family. Let's do a little test here. I need every, everybody to be all in on this, so do this well. Stand up, don't say anything. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Let's go. Everybody stand up. I want you to be all in and don't say anything, but I want you to sit down. If you do not know all of your grandparents' full names, not like Gangi and Bonka and Papa or something like that, sit down if you do not know your grandparents' names, okay? All right, fair enough. Up, whoop, whoop, whoop. Stay with me. Stay with me. All right. That's just sort of one, one, you guys stay sitting down. That's sort of one generation. Sit down if you do not know your great grandparents' names. First, 
We're, we're going to go with, if you know any part of their name, you can stay standing. Great grandparents. Oh, great. Kylie's asking, does last name count? I know their last name. Ha, ha, ha. That's funny. All right. Stay standing if you know, be honest about this, if you know what your great, not your grands, your great grandparents did for a living. You know what, like where they worked, what they did. Are you being honest? Really? You know what your great grandparents did for a living. You do? All right. All right, last one. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you this one. If you stay standing, I'm going to make you, like, give me an answer maybe. Stay standing if you can name the name of some siblings of your great, great grandparents. Names of siblings of great, great grandparents. What do you got? She had one sister. Her, so you know this because she's named after you, Genevieve. Excellent. All right. Have a seat. Have a seat. Great, great grandparents' siblings' name. What was it? Give me a name. Jeremiah? Faramiah. All right. Very cool. All right. Everybody can have a seat. Here's the point with that. The point with that is this. Most of us sat down on one of the first two questions. I couldn't have answered that because guess what? I don't know Big Mama's name. I don't know my grandmother's mother's name. I don't know Big Mama's name. It's just Big Mama. That's all I've ever known her as, right? The point is, is we have these generations that are a part of our family. And like it or not, they're a part of our history that we don't really know a whole lot about. Right? We know a little bit about. We don't really know a whole lot about. And that has not always kind of been the case throughout history. Did you know that kind of back in the day... Like back in, in biblical times, back in you know time when we read a lot of these stories, that lineage and family history was super duper important, right? Like if your family, if someone in your family, you know, 80 years ago did something really, really special and really, really well, everybody for generation to generation sort of benefited from that and celebrated about that, right? I mean, can you imagine if someone in your family 100 years ago did something great, and you today kind of were reaping the benefits of that. I know that happens sometimes in life where we get to sort of reap the benefits of generations, but for the most part, that's a distant memory for most of us, right? Or what if somebody generations ago in your life made a mistake and you had to, let's say 80 to 100 years later, you had to experience the consequences of their mistake, right? Right? And that's what happened kind of back in the day. I mean, back when Jesus was kind of walking around and lived, people were so connected to their history and to their ancestry because it, it was a lot of pressure, right? I mean, it, it was pressure to, hey, like, if I mess up, is like my son, a hundred or grandson, great, great grandson, whoever, not going to be able to go to college because I mess up now? That's probably a lot of pressure, right? Or think about, hey, like, if I Snapchat something that's inappropriate, does my, like, great, 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 great granddaughter not get a job? That, that's like what it would be like back then. That's how connected these generations were. And so here's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to look at what's called a lineage or a genealogy. Now, I need a volunteer to help me up here. And this is, I need you to think when I'm saying this about what I need, all right? I need someone who um, can read well in front of people. I need someone who is confident in their ability to enunciate, and if you don't know what enunciate means, just put your hand down, all right? I need somebody who will take this a little bit seriously, and I need somebody who will not be embarrassed if they sort of get something wrong. Is that Maggie? Maggie, I got Ma Maggie's close. Maggie, come up. Oh, no. I forgot a microphone. I'll be right back. Maggie, just stand there and smile. Hi, Maggie. All right, you need to take that right there. Stand right up here. Come on up. Come up. Come up close. All right, tell everybody who you are. What? Tell everybody who you are. Um, I am Maggie. What's your last name? Jerosco. Where do you go to school? Um, Noble. What grade are you in? Sixth grade. Okay, so we're going to have a sixth grader who's going to just nail this. So Maggie, here's what's about to happen. There's going to be something that's going to come on screen, and you're just going to read it. 
Okay, now here's the cool thing. It's just scripture, right? It's just from the Bible. What we're going to look at is something in Matthew chapter 18, uh, verses 1, sorry, Matthew chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. And you're going to read it, and then I'm just going to talk about it for a minute. So, you ready for the first part? It's real easy. Start here. Loud and proud. One. This is the genealogy of Jesus the Messiah, the son of David, and the son of Abraham. Okay, stop there. Okay, so this is the, the, the history, the lineage of Jesus. Now, there's something that it, it says there, the son of David, which might confuse you, right? You might say, wait a minute, I know the Christmas story well enough to know that Jesus was the son of Joseph and Mary, right? I mean, Joseph and Mary, I mean, the Virgin Mary, so, you know, we don't need to get complicated with all of that, but, right? So Mary and Joseph didn't really, to, but she, Jesus, okay? Right? So, but here's the, here's the confusion. Son of David really just means, like sometimes they would say the son of someone that just really means from the family of, right? From the sort of the line, the genealogy of. So Jesus is from the son of David. And see what had happened is years and years ago, God had promised that Jesus would come from David's line. Okay, so now Maggie, it's about to get fun. Here we go. Here's the genealogy. 42 generations you're about to meet. Abraham was the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of Jacob, Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers, Judah the father of Perez and Jerah, Zerah, Zerah whose mother was Tamar, Perez the father of Hezron, Hezron the father of Ram. Okay, stop. How you doing? You doing okay? Because mm -hmm. that is like, that's level one in names. You ready? Here we go. Keep rolling. Ram the father of Aminadab. And Minadab, the father of Nahashan. Nahashan, the father of s salmon. <laughs> salmon. Not the, the fish, father. not the fish. <laughs> salmon, the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz, the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed, the father of Jesse. And Jesse, the father of King David. I don't know if you noticed, but I said we're going to verse 18, and that's just six. So let's keep going. Okay. David was the, David was the father of Solomon, whose mother had been... Uriah's wife, Solomon, the father of Rehoboam, Re Rehoboam, the father of Ajibia. Just say big word if you want to. Okay, big word, the father of Asa, <laughs> Asa, the father of Jehoshaphat, word, Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat, the father of Jerome, Jeroman, Jeroman, the Jeho father of Uzziah. <laughs> Keep rolling. We're getting close. Uzziah, the father of Jotham, Jotham, the father of Ahaz, Ahaz the father of Hezekiah, Hezekiah the father of Manasseh, Manasseh the father of Ammon, Ammon the, fa the father of Josiah, and Josiah the father of Jehoshaphat. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. And his brothers at the time of the exile of Babylon. We're getting so close. Sorry, keep rolling. Are you good? You keep going? All right, keep rolling. After the exile to Babylon, Jeconia was the father of Shephelah. She <laughs> big word, the father of yeah. other big words. Just, yeah, <laughs> big words. <laughs> big word, the father of Ahibad, uh, Abihud. Abihud, the father of Elikim. Elikim, the father of Azur. Azur, the father of Zadok. Zadok, the father of Achim. Achim, the father of This is so Elihud. fun. You're doing great. We're almost there. Keep going. Elihud, the father of Eleazar. Eleazar, the father of Matan. Matan, the father of Jacob. And Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. And Mary was the mother of Jesus, who is called the Messiah. Thus, there were 14 generations in all from Abraham to David, 14 from David to the exile to Babylon, and 14 from the exile to the Messiah. Let's hear for Maggie. Good job, girl. Way to go. Thank you. Yes, you may go. I just got Maggie to do that because I didn't want to. I didn't want to tackle all of those names. Hey, if you want to like practice that, go home. Matthew chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. You can learn lots of cool names to name your kids other than Eloise, huh? Verse 18, is there one more verse? I think we just went to 17 here. Sorry, I might have said 18. It's 17. That's all we went to for here. All right. So, here's the deal. 
all of that just looks like a whole bunch of like really hard names to say, a whole bunch of people that were like the father of and the mother of and the father of this genealogy, this line, right, that all went from David to Jesus. Now, here's the interesting thing about that. Like, if you're thinking of the Son of God who's coming into the world, who we all know was like this perfect person, and you're thinking about his family, and who, like, what would produce, what, what kind of family would produce this perfect guy to come walk around on earth and love us and, and sort of pay the price for our sin? You would think it would be a pretty, like, clean, upstanding, good family. But I could tell you story after story about people in that lineage who were screwed up and messed up. Let's just look at a couple of them, right? So if you go to, uh, to David, let's just talk about David, King David, right? David, uh, he's the guy who's the shepherd boy, right, who killed the giant Goliath, right? There was this battle, and he was a shepherd, and a bunch of people are fighting, and there's these Philistines, and they have this huge mammoth of a man called Goliath that nobody could kill. And David, with slingshot and stones, you know the Bible story, right? Kills Goliath. And eventually what happens is David just kind of becomes more powerful, and he becomes the first true, real, righteous king of Israel. Israel is God's chosen people, right? And a lot of what we read in the Old Testament is about them and their story, right? And so David becomes the king. And then he's got this army, he's got this one guy, and he has an affair with one of kind of his key guy's wife. Right? Oh yeah, David, you know what God said about David? God said that David was a man after his own heart. That's what God said, right? So, so David had an affair with one of his men's wives. Then he had that guy killed in order to cover up the affair. And then he led war after war to kill thousands of people. That's somebody who is in the line, the history, the family of Jesus. All right? Next slide, let's go to Bathsheba who was mentioned in there. Well, she's the one who David had the affair with, right? So she cheated on her husband, and because of their relationship, it caused her husband's death, ultimately, right? And then there was all kinds of turmoil in the family, and there was fighting, and there were things going on, and through all of this family turmoil, four of David's sons were killed, and it really kind of caused this tremendous civil war. And so here you got David, and you got Bathsheba, these two people in the line of Jesus Again, who you might think the family of the line of Jesus was the perfect family, but it wasn't. And, and I could tell you story after story, but for the sake of time, just let's think about Mary, right? Just Mary, Jesus' mom. I mean, there's not a whole lot you know, bad you can say about Mary. She didn't do anything wrong. But because you know, God came to her and she is now pregnant with this child, can you imagine sort of the scandal around you know, teenage pregnancy? That, that is, it was even like infinitely worse back then than it is today because, you know, who you were and your honor was so important. And if, if something like that happened to you, there was so much shame that was around you. So you have this girl who God chose because she was righteous, who has this baby in her. And all of a sudden, everybody's talking about her. I mean, can you imagine the Instagram stories around Mary? Had that been a thing back then, right? All the conversations that would have happened about this girl, Mary. And so there's kind of this, this cloud of shame around her. And really, teenage girl becomes pregnant, gossiping stories around her. People treat her poorly. She becomes an outcast. And then she gives birth to the Son of God. And that's what Christmas is, right? Christmas is the birth of the Son of God here into the world. And so she was in this situation that she didn't really know what to do with. But it kind of brought a little bit of shame to her family initially. And so here's the deal. This, this whole lineage, this whole history, this whole looking back at the, the family, Christmas is really sort of the announcement of Jesus into the world, right? And here's sort of what the announcement, kind of the introduction was. Hey, I'm Jesus. I'm here. I'm from a messed up family full of messed up people who did messed up things. I mean, my great, great, great grandparents, they had an affair. They tried to cover it up. It cost thousands of lives. My great-great-grandfather murdered one of his closest friends. I'm Jesus. That's who my great-great-great-grandfather is. My own mother was really accused of awful, awful things and called every name in the book. And guess what? God, my father, still used all of those people in a mighty way. Here's what I want y'all to hear tonight. God uses people who are messed up from families that are messed up 
to accomplish his purpose in the world. I don't know if you sometimes feel like you are a person who is messed up, right? We, we, all, we all mess up in some way, shape, or form. At times, we all feel sort of this pain and this pressure of, gosh, I, I'm, I'm just, I feel like I'm messed up. I don't know if God can use me. But I promise you, God can use you because God uses people who are messed up from families that are messed up to accomplish his purposes in the world. If you feel like, hey, like I don't even really know how to relate to my family. And, and I, sometimes I know, believe it or not, I know middle school and high school students sometimes are ashamed of their family. And maybe you feel like, hey, I'm not even sure I want to connect with my family. And I don't know if God can use my family. I'm just going to tell you that God can use people who are messed up and families who are messed up to accomplish his purposes in the world. But the point, the, the, really what you have to do is you have to be a person who wants to accomplish God's purposes in the world. Who wants to say, hey, I understand really what Christmas means, where Jesus is born into the world. And now I have an opportunity to have a relationship with him. You see, see what, what we all are born into the world. And for us here in this room, we're all born as American citizens, right? That's what we are. We're American citizens. But did you know that you, you're citizens of something different, something other than that? Did you know that, that if you say you want to follow Jesus, you are citizens of the kingdom of God, which you probably don't think about a whole lot. You probably just think about you live, you're, you're kind of a citizen of this city, this state, this region, you know, our country. But, but scripture talks a lot about how there's the kingdom of the world and there's the kingdom of God. And once you say you want to follow Jesus and give your life to him, you are a part of the kingdom of God, which has this amazing family lineage that is not perfect, but that God uses. And so you have to sort of ask yourself the question, I, I'm hoping you're thinking about this Christmas, is, you know, is your Christmas and your time with your family really just going to be this mass chaos and confusion and I just got to deal with these people and I'm really not sure? Or can you maybe think a little bit deeper about your family and your family connections? And then can you say, I'm not just sort of a citizen of this family and this American kingdom. I'm a citizen of the kingdom of God. And what does that mean for me? Because being a part of the kingdom of God is different than being a part of the kingdom of the world. And you know the difference. Because you, you sort of live in both worlds every day. You go to school and I promise you 99.7% of what you experience at school or with your friends or maybe even at home, I don't know, is probably kingdom of the world. But if you want to follow Jesus, can you step into this kingdom of God, you have a king who comes from this royal lineage that isn't perfect, but it is exactly what God wants for it to be. So here's the last thing. Christmas shows us that no matter who you are, sorry, who you come from, or what you've done, God can still use you, right? When Jesus came into the world, when we understand the lineage of Christ, it shows us that no matter who you come from or what you've done, God can still use you. And you have to just open your heart to say, Lord, how do you want to use me? How can I be a part of the kingdom of God in maybe a different way than you've thought of? Talk about that tonight in your small group. Ask questions about that. Understand that, that God wants to use you and he can do it no matter where you're from or what you've done. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for uh, just the picture of family and how it's not perfect, how uh, it can really be messed up sometimes. But thank you that you redeem that, that you are the one who changes everything when we say yes to you. And so God, what I pray for is for these students just to be able to, to really see you clearly to see uh, what it is that you want to do in them and through them and to help them realize that you're the king who was born here into this world from a royal line. And God, what you want is you want to be king uh, in each and every one of our hearts and our lives. So help us all to be able to do that well. Pray this in Jesus' name.